Lexington, Indiana. Told me, won't you slow down, son? Flagstaff, Arizona. Showed me where we all come from. Hey there everyone and welcome back to our off-grid cabin build. Today we're tackling two projects which will have an immediate impact on our quality of life here at the cabin. Join us as we revive a precious family heirloom while adding a touch of practicality with a brand new carport. Let's begin. We were ready for a quieter start after last video and needed to catch up on a few general items at the block. Mitch had to give his trailer a bit of TLC after it sat in storage for two years. He had to fix up the number plate and replace the tail light, as the trailer has been getting plenty of use in picking up materials and furniture for the cabin and we need to make sure it continues to stay in good shape. Mitch's shed came in handy as we had a spare tail light laying around. If you don't need to put a number plate up there, I'll just screw it like that. And while he was busy with that, I got started on clearing the space in front of the cabin. I got to work moving our outdoor fire pit out of the way and attempting to burn the pile of weeds left over from Mitch's brush cutting. Even after a few days of warm sunny weather, the pile was still pretty green so it took a bit of wood and the trusty blower to get the pile burning. What? I burnt out this side. We're clearing this space out as Mitch wants to be able to use it as a turning area so he doesn't have to do a 10 point turn every time he has the trailer hooked on. After our slow start to the day, Mitch dove head first into the project of extending our current shed coverage with a rustic double carport. The carport will come in handy to keep our current wood stack dry when the winter rain comes and to help protect Mitch's precious Holden. You wouldn't tell it by looking at it as the poor girl has seen better days since spending two years out in the elements, but Mitch is looking forward to cleaning her up once work on the cabin starts to slow down. On the carport, Mitch started laying the groundwork by digging the post holes.
With a stash of logs and beams still laying around from the initial cabin and shed builds, we set to work lining them up in the holes and getting them nice and straight. We're making enough room for two cars to fit in, so we'll need seven posts as the other two will come straight off the existing shed. Our post hole digger has come in handy a lot for these projects. We're anchoring the structure with packed clay, a technique that has served us well with the shed. We're pretty happy with how the shed has held up these last two years, so we're pretty confident that this will work just fine for our quaint little carport. No, I've got um, I've got one more to go in the middle there. And who says a carport has to be perfectly symmetrical? You'll probably notice that the carport isn't totally square to the shed. We opted to work with the contours of our clearing and with the existing space we had without having to move our wood stack or digging further into the back of the bank. I was trying to use a fork. It's a big heavy post. It's a big heavy post. Not bigger than the one that was there. Oh. Oh. Wonder what we look like on camera. Is the camera going? Yeah. Oh, hello. Now this post has got a weird twisty McNishy in it. Oh, it looks pretty good where it's sitting. I'll chuck some dirt in there and we'll plumb her up. And then I've got to cut the tops of them off. Let me string line go. Just give it a bit of a jimmy side to side, the dirt will go down. That's it. See it falls down. Then it then it mm. starts to stiffen up a bit. You wanna tell me which way it needs to go, do you reckon? No, not with the level, just with the eyeball. Oh, okay. Isn't it? Go back more. And you'll just line up the po them three posts towards the back. Whoa! Whoa! Left hand, over. Over, behind. Whoa! I think it's pretty good. Yeah. I really need you to check though. I will check. Oh, I, good. I just want you to check. What about the other way? I think it needs to go a little bit that way. Yeah, it's pretty good. Maybe a tiny bit more. Yeah. Oh, a bit more. Yeah, just hold a bit of pressure on it. And then handle with your foot a bit. That's got it. Let it go. Lovely dark. That's good now. You'll see that Mitch has pushed the front post back about a metre. This is to give us a bit more room between the carport and caravan awning to pull the car in and out, as it would have been a bit squishy if we'd kept the posts out the front. Yeah! And let me tell you, Hoisting those roof beams into place was no small feat. Thank goodness for Mitch's dad lending a hand because there was no way I would have gotten some of the larger logs into place. It's great to have some extra undercover space to store wood, furniture, cars, all of the above, out of the way and out of the elements. Now, we're so excited for this next addition, the cabin fireplace. I'm on a bit of an angle, 
up through the door. Do you reckon? We'll give it a shot. We wanted to get this in place pretty early on to make our living and working environments more comfortable, especially as we head into the cooler autumn months. Lift, 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 lift. Go. Push. That's good. This will be the heart of our cabin, where we plan to spend evenings cooking pots of warm stew and basking in the bright glow of the flames. I know. Is that the worst of it over? But here's the twist. This isn't just any old fireplace we've picked up from the side of the road. It's a cherished gift from Mitch's parents with a long history. You know, if we want to paint it or we'll get it, uh, if we want to clean it up or paint it, let's we'll take it back out. <laughs> Two hundred mil too far. You don't want that tin eating up too much. Two hundred. How long is this thing though? The fireplace was handcrafted by Mitch's dad and boasts some delightful upgrades, like an extended back for larger logs of wood. That melted that big bass piece on. So you can sit on the timber in it. An ashtray at the front and beautiful brass accents. There's also plenty of room on top to cook with, which I'm super excited to start using. And let me tell you, polishing those brass handles and the front doors was a labour of love. You see, it's all gone green. These are brass doors. I can go all the way around if you want. See that? Will that green come off? Mm-hmm. Oh, will it? I've started now. I didn't realise these were brass doors. They came up so more beautiful than we could ever have imagined, and they make us smile every time we admire them. They look nice like that, they won't they? They look beautiful. Look at it coming. Wow. That's incredible. It gets, it gets the tarnish off it. Yeah. This fireplace was the first fireplace Mitch's parents had in their home. So it's pretty special that it's the first fireplace we're installing in our new home. And the surprises didn't end there. Alongside the fireplace, Mitch's parents passed down a stunning bronze screen and tool stand, both family heirlooms that have been passed down through the generations and that we hope we'll be able to pass down to the next generation in the future. Mitch and I are particularly fond of the screen, which depicts a scene of hunting dogs, and it feels pretty fitting for our little cabin in the trees. With the fireplace positioned, it was ready for the flue to be installed. After cutting the roof open and assembling the entire kit, our cabin is ready for its new centerpiece to be lit. It was pretty exciting to think of what this means for the cabin and how much more we'll be able to use this space even while it's still a work in progress. Can you imagine the delicious meals we'll be able to cook over those flames? The possibilities are endless and we can't wait to share them with you. Drop me a comment below with some ideas of what you'd like to see cooked on the fireplace first. And there you have it. Another piece of the cabin is done. If you've enjoyed unwinding with us on this episode, don't forget to show some love by hitting that like button and sharing your thoughts in the comments below. We love hearing from you and can't wait to see what cozy adventures await us next. Take care and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers, legends.